beautiful glaciers, snowy lakes, and one of the best cross-country skiing destinations in the world. Visit the two Swiss villages Pontresina and Sils Maria with me. Join me on an adventurous hike through a winter wonderland and drive on one of the most beautiful passes to the Engadin Valley in Switzerland. I am in Pontresina now and Pontresina is kind of the cross-country village here in Engadin because it's very very famous for all the cross-country cross slopes that are going around here. Pontresina lies at 1805 meters in an upper Engadin side valley, very close to the Bernina mountains and to the highest peaks in the Eastern Alps. And Pontresina is indeed a historic mountaineering village. Coins found here indicate that the Pontresina area was already populated during the Bronze Age. The first inn opened its doors in 1850 and in the summer of 1885 about 2000 guests visited Pontresina already. Pontresina is a favorite base for ice climbers, ski touring and snowshoeing. But it's probably most famous for its cross-country skiing as the famous marathon route virtually runs through the village. And Pontresina is supposed to have the best cheese store in the area. So let's look for Swiss cheese. Of course, I could not resist to buy cheese for another delicious cheese fondue. And no, you can't have too much cheese fondue when visiting Switzerland in winter times. Today is my first day of cross-country skiing and we will see how that goes. The skis are very thin, very long and um, I'm very curious how cross-country skiing will be. The lakes in the Engadin Valley are a perfect playground to learn cross-country skiing as there are no steep climbs or other obstacles and the slopes are maintained several times a day. I admit that I'm maybe not the most elegant and fastest cross-country skier yet, but during my stay I had the chance to watch a cross-country skiing World Cup race. Yes, the cross-country slopes in the Engadin Valley and close to Pontresina are not only for terrible beginners like me, but really some of the best in the world. The next day I took off on an unplanned adventure. So here behind me, here, you can see the beautiful glacier of this valley. But wait! Let's start where it all began. A few hours earlier, I didn't even know that there is a glacier. The whole misery started because it was a lovely sunny day in Pontresina. And I thought I would go for a quick after lunch walk and followed a few signs that I saw at the railway station of Pontresina that promised some countryside passes. At the very beginning of my walk, I met another person who came from the opposite direction. This person told me that there is a great view on a glacier at the end of the path. Great view? You guys know what that means. I'm in. So I walked. And walked. And 
could walk. Five kilometers later I still walked. And I was expecting the glacier to pop up behind every next corner I took. But there were only nice creeks. And birds. And a whole sledge carrying people who obviously didn't walk. And there was as well a lot of fresh snow that made the walking quite exhausting. Finally there was a sign that told me that it's only 10 minutes to my destination and I was full of new energy. So here behind me, here, you can see the beautiful glacier of this valley. Val Rosec is a car-free valley reachable only by foot, cross-country skis or with a so-called horse bus that offers rides in both directions. The valley has spectacular views on the Rosec glacier. Unfortunately, the glacier is only half the size it used to be today. But the other hikers I met for sure didn't promise too much. The view is spectacular and worth every meter I walked. The fact that I had no clue that this hike would take about 4 hours and not 30 minutes and the fact that I as well had no clue about the so-called horse bus that I just missed when reaching Val Rosec meant that I had to hike all the way back. I was pretty much the only one around as the sun was going down already. And then I got attacked by birds. Ooh. These little beggars were probably hoping for some delicious bird food. But I didn't even bring water to my hike and was hungry and thirsty myself. Sorry! You see it very far away here. That's the glacier. This is literally the best out there. It's cool and perfect. When visiting the Engadin Valley, its amazing lakes and slopes, the town Sears Maria is worth a visit too. And if you want to watch a movie that plays in Sears, I can highly recommend Clouds of Sears Maria with Kirsten Stewart playing one of the main characters. Today we are having a walk on the Silsa lake uh, and it's one of all these lakes here in the Engadin Valley and they are all kind of equally beautiful. From Sils Maria you can enter the skiing area for Cellas and Korvac that I already showed you in the last episode, or enter the lakes to go cross-country skiing. But Sils Maria is as well the intellectual capital of the Engadin Valley. The famous philosopher Nietzsche spent at least 600 days in Sils between 1881 and 1888, in a house that you can still visit today. He said about the Engadin Valley, it is as if I had entered the promised land. I want to stay here for a long time. He came to concentrate on his work and walk, 
So did many other famous writers like Marcel Proust, Hermann Hesse, Rainer Maria Rilke, Erich Kästner, Friedrich Dürrenmatt and Anne Frank. Their preferred place to stay was the Waldhaus Hotel, that is still one of the best places in the area. The Waldhaus Seals is as well a famous place for musicians to meet. Composers such as Richard Strauss and Arthur Honegger enjoyed summers in the mountains at the Waldhaus. And even Rod Stewart and David Bowie stayed here. There are endless possibilities to walk or hike on the lakes of Engadin Valley. But there is as well another sport that you can practice on the lakes. Snow kiting. No trip to the Engadin Valley is complete without traveling one of its famous mountain passes. In the last episode I already introduced you to Julier Pass, but following the road along the lakes from Sils Maria will take you to another gem, Maloya Pass. Maloya Pass looks back on a long history. For two millennia, Maloya Pass formed a passage from Lake Como to Julier Pass and through the Engadin Valley. In the year 1909, about 450 horses crossed the pass daily in summer times, in winter about 107. These days Maloya Pass is open all year too, and I didn't dare to count how many cars I saw crossing.
Guys, I wish every one of you a fantastic start to the new year. And I hope we will go on many adventures together in 2022. If you like the winter wonderland of the Engadin Valley, give this video a thumbs up. And write a comment if you will be part of the Got to Go travel crew next year. We will pick up our motorcycle journey and the series Destination Home again next week. It will take us from France to Spain, to the city San Sebastian, its surroundings at the sea and to Spanish tapas. Tune in next Thursday to feed your appetite for adventure. <laughs>